العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. Hijra or auda emigration or return the hijra as i believe uh, our brother from the ministry has already clarified to you hijra is an obligation on muslims of course as was mentioned that obligation to Medina ended with the taking or the conquest of Mecca. La hijrata ba'd al-fatih. After the conquest of Mecca, hijra to Medina was no longer an obligation. However, hijra as a principle in Islam remained an obligation. We have a well-known hadith from Prophet Muhammad وسلم, authentically narrated in Sunan Abi Dawood and Musnad Ahmed as well as Al-Darimi. لَا تَنْقَطْعُ الْهِجْرَةَ حَتَّى تَنْقَطِعَ التوبة. That hijra will not end until repentance ends. وَلَا تَنْقَطْعُ التوبة حَتَّى تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسِ in Maghribiha and repentance will not end until the sun rises from the west. So Prophet Muhammad Sallam has established the principle of hijra or emigration until the last day. It remains an obligation on Muslims. That hijra fundamentally is a hijra from a place or any place where one cannot practice Islam properly or at all to a place where one can practice Islam better, not necessarily completely, but better than where we were. We are obliged to move to whatever part of the country, because the hijra doesn't necessarily mean leaving Somaliland and going outside. It could be within Somaliland, to from one part to another part, or from Somaliland to the south, depending on our ability to practice Islam. So, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu explained what the principle behind it was when he said al muslim man salim al muslimun min lisanihi wa yadi that the muslim is one from whose hand and whose tongue muslims are safe wal muhajir and the one who makes hijra who truly makes hijra wal muhajir Man hajara ma nahallahu an. And the true immigrant is the one who emigrates from whatever Allah has prohibited. So that is the essence of hijra. It is leaving whatever Allah has prohibited in order to do what he has commanded. So that principle obviously remains as a central principle in our lives. 
in our lives till we die we have to keep that principle in mind now the reality of the Somali community a community a country a land where Islam was known from one end to the other practiced 100% in general not necessarily saying that every Muslim in Somali Somalia was a good Muslim but Muslims nonetheless then came a time of trial prior to that time of trial the missionaries tried their hardest to convert Somalis to Christianity missionaries tried their hardest from different parts of the world they came and they tried and they failed for years however when the trial came and civil war developed and the country split up fighting amongst its peoples then the West opened its arms and said we will take care of you come to us and of course those of us here who had seen what the West had to offer on television in the newspapers etc this was very attractive so Muslims left Somalia Somaliland Puntland and went to the West all over the West Alhamdulillah Somalis in the West added a new component of Islam the early immigrants to the West were Pakistanis and Indians they were the largest majority Bangladeshis from South East Asia they were joined by Egyptians and others but no Somalis until the time of the trial when Somalis came into North America they added a new dimension to Islam for the most part that dimension was hijab the women's hijab the West had not seen hijab on that scale before the West Muslims in the West in their communities they were already used to leaving whatever hijab they had in their countries in India Pakistan etc coming to the West and just dressing normally that was the norm then came the Somalis wearing full hijab that electrified the communities the Muslim communities of the West and alhamdulillah it revived hijab it caused hijab to be spread amongst them mashallah it had a great positive impact but while that was taking place other things was hap were happening because you're not just dealing with hijab you're dealing with families that are coming families migrated to the West and what was happening as these young people ended up in the schools of the West and coming under the influence of the West that for the first time in the history of the Somali community Somalis converted to Christianity first time I remember being there in Toronto people asking me to go talk to these Somali kids who had 
converted to Christianity. This was the beginning. And that was followed by those who went so far as to deny Islam. Ayan Hirsi became the frontal attack on Islam. She was a Muslim. She came from a Muslim family and she is declaring Islam is the enemy of civilization. And all of the various colors in between. That was just, these were just two extremes. While I was Imam of one of the largest Somali masjids in Toronto in 2012, I was there for almost a year. I was Imam of Abu Huraira Center. Alhamdulillah, though it's called a Somali masjid, actually, at least 50% of the people there are not Somalis. But Somalis were the ones who initiated it. I used to visit their little center when they had a little place above some shops and I would come and give talks there. So when they were searching, I helped them to find. Actually, I found the center for them. I was looking for it to set up a college there, an Islamic college, and it didn't work out. So I, I, I passed it on to them and they took it got it, developed it, and alhamdulillah, it is expanding and developing rapidly. It's a beautiful center, and alhamdulillah, a very beautiful community. But, as Imam, I had a chance now to hear and to see the problems of the community. Because a person might visit and go and not see the inside. They only see the surface. But now as the Imam, now, as the Imam, they had set for me a schedule for counseling. People would come with their kids, family problems, etc., and ask me to help them resolve these problems. So, for the first time also, I met Somalis youths who had become homosexuals. If they hadn't become homosexuals, I met Somali youth, males and females, who felt their parents were outdated. You know, why they were so much against homosexuality and lesbianism and bisexualism and transsexualism, and they have no end of isms. They couldn't understand why the parents were so much against it when they had friends at school who were homosexuals and they were nice people. So why, why, why is Islam so much against it? You know, these were the questions they were asking. I mean, a question which would not be asked normally in a Muslim community. But here they were now being asked. Young people who were on the verge of atheism or who had become atheists. They no longer believed in Allah. And they had logical arguments for it. They, it was reasoned out. It wasn't like Ayan Hirsi who was seeking political uh, positioning and money and all these kind of things. It's very clear from her agenda, you know, that there is no sincerity there. But I met young people who were sincerely atheists who sincerely could not accept that God existed. They had been logically undermined and overcome to the point that they defended the arguments that God did not exist. Regardless of how ridiculous the arguments of the atheists might have seemed, we found Muslims defending them on a scale which was very disheartening. It was sad, sad to see Muslims affected to such a degree. And of course, it wasn't just 
Somali kids, the kids from all the other communities, the Pakistanis, the Egyptians, mm -hmm. all of them had the same problem. But of course it is of particular relevance to us now and here because we are here in Somaliland. So it is a Somali issue that we need to be aware of. What had happened was the curse of Allah. The curse of Allah for those who chose to live amongst the disbelievers. This would eventually catch them. The Prophet ﷺ had said in an authentic narration, Ana bari'un min kulli muslimin yuqimu bayna adhar al-mushrikeen. I am innocent of every Muslim, any and every Muslim who lives amongst the disbelievers. This is the Prophet ﷺ raising his hand, his support, his shafa'ah for those who choose to live among the disbelievers the mushrikeen, the pagans. This is not the way that a Muslim is supposed to live. What had happened, and it doesn't mean that all Muslims have to be in Muslim lands, but what had happened in North America as it happened in the UK and other countries, where Muslims had emigrated there they emigrated for the dunya they emigrated for material purposes and because of that they didn't create communities they lived scattered lives and so they were not able to help each other because Muslims can live in America, Muslims can live in Canada, UK, Norway, wherever, but they should live together. That's the point, that there should be an internal hijra. After getting there to these lands, they should make an internal hijra to make sure that they live together. After the Prophet ﷺ had said he was innocent, the Sahaba asked, Lima ya Rasulullah? Why? Why would you move your hands, your support from those who live amongst the disbelievers? He answered, saying, La tara'a narahuma. They should not see the fires of the disbelievers, nor should the disbelievers see their fires. This is an expression addressing the need to live together. That your neighbors, who is your neighbor? In the ancient times, 1,400 years ago, it was your tent and the next tent. You had a fire which you used to cook and provide light for your area and they have a fire. So you see their fire and they see your fire. Means you are neighbors. So your neighbors, the ones who are beside you, behind you and in front of you should all be Muslims. That's how Muslims are supposed to live. And once they don't live like that, where those who are beside them, in front of them, behind them are non-Muslims, then their deen will be threatened, their faith will be weakened, and corruption will spread amongst them. And that is exactly what happened. Alhamdulillah, some families seeing this happen now began to think about Hijrah. 
they had emigrated to Canada, America, UK, but when they saw the effects on their children, they started to think we need to get out of here. This place is dangerous. It's destroying our families. The welfare agencies encourage the women to divorce their husbands. We will provide for you. You got a lazy husband who is chewing chat even over there. Get rid of him, kick him out the house. You, we'll provide the finances, you, we'll take care of you, special homes, etc. So the women became emboldened because of course they see these useless men, you know, they're working twice as hard and, you know, so they're just a burden. So the society encourages them, kick them out, get rid of them. So now you have families that are headed only by females. And that family headed by a female alone is weak. Because in spite of the fact that the man might be chewing cut, he still is an authority figure. The certain things won't take place when he is present. But once you take him out of the mix, it's only a woman, she is busy taking care of the cooking and all the other things, then the kids are lost. They're in the street, they're dropping out of school, they're forming gangs. I was giving a lecture there during that same period, 2012, and during the lecture there was a big commotion, sirens came, etc. And it was a place downtown in Toronto. And after everything settled down, they informed me that some kids from a Somali gang from another part of the city had come and they clashed with the kids from that area and one of the boys were knifed and had to go to hospital. Was, you know. And this was common when I, whilst I was there in the newspapers. Known, no, a huge number of young people killing each other with guns, knives, etc. Gang fights. Drug dealers, the big drug dealers in Toronto became the Somalis, took over the drugs, selling of guns. In the jails, full Somalis. So, realizing that problem, a number of families began to look back home. They began to think, Auda, return. This is not good for us. So what they were doing now was making hijra. Hijra away from North America. Back to Somaliland, other parts of Somalia. And this was the blessed hijra. Where they realized and sought to protect their deen, they now came and made a true hijra, one which put them under Allah's blessing. And the good that we see happening here in Hargeza and the other cities of Somaliland, much of it comes from those who have returned, those who are planning to return, those who maintain their roots here, that much of the future of Somaliland will be tied up with those returnees, those who have decided to protect themselves from that curse of Allah. The curse which is mentioned in Surah An Nisa, verse 97, where Allah says there, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَفَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ ظَالِمِي أَنفُسِهِمْ قَالُوا فِيمَا كُنْتُمْ Indeed those who the angels take their souls while in a state of oppression. The angels say to them, what was your condition? قَالُوا 
كنا مستضعفين في الأرض قالوا كنا مستضعفين في الأرض They will say We were weak and oppressed in the land But the angels say back to them قالوا ألم تكن أرض الله واسعة فتهاجروا فيها Wasn't Allah's earth wide and expensive, expansive so you could emigrate in it, go to some other part, get away from that point of oppression? فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ Those, their end will be hell. وَسَاءَتْ مصيرة, An evil end. That is the curse of Allah. For those who remain in that state, in the West, who have left the land of Muslims and gone there for material purposes. So much so that people create identities, claim to be who they are not, in order to achieve that emigration, sacrificing so much. And in the end, their families destroyed. For those of you who are visitors, who are considering Somaliland again, I invite you as a Somalilander by default, I invite you to stay. To find a way here, Allah will make it possible for you. This is the land of Islam. And this is where you need to be. Alhamdulillah, my university, the Islamic Online University, has initiated programs here to make Islamic knowledge more and more accessible to anyone and introduced at the same time an intensive English course in order to upgrade the standard of English in the country which is one of the things holding the graduates down and holding the progress back a program which depends to a large degree on diaspora returnees. Because we want that program to be the best English program in Somalia. We are providing English taught by native speakers of English. We have provided jobs for over 30 Somalilanders to work in our program for the Islamic Online University and our intensive English course. And there are other jobs springing up all over the city, all across the country. There is a place for you here. Make your hijra back. It's time. So that Somaliland can move forward, we need all of your energies, all of your skills, all of what Allah has blessed you with to help rebuild Somaliland. So Hijra is the only real and practical option. For those unable to practice Islam properly in the West. Those who have good jobs where they are within communities, their families are safe, for them to continue to work there with the intention to spread Islam through their work, to send finances back to Somaliland, that is not a bad choice. It's not a bad choice for them to stay. 
and not return immediately. However, for the majority, the vast majority are suffering. And we need to take this opportunity, the opportunity to return and be a part of reestablishing the Ummah here. Allah blessed Somalia, Somaliland, blessed it in that Islam is still the religion of the country. The masjids are full, no bars visible in the streets, women are properly dressed though men now have become improperly dressed. <laughs> when I looked at ancient drawings and uh, pictures made by the, the Britishers when they came here and colonized this area, I saw them in Ambassador Hotel. They have them on the walls there. And I looked at the early Somalilanders. Then, the women were not properly dressed. And the men were properly dressed. Today it has reversed itself. The women are now properly dressed. And many of the men are improperly dressed. You know, we have succumbed to Western traditions and practices. It's become accepted now. But this is one of the areas that does need to be corrected. Besides the major area of cut, which needs to be eradicated, I mean, we do have some negative elements here. So much of our finances, which are limited, wasted in these drugs. But in spite of those negativities, there's so much positivity. The, the greater positivity is here. This is no doubt a safer land circumstance in which to raise a Muslim family. The future is here. So I invite you to make that decision. If you are between one foot on, in, in North America and the other foot here in Somaliland, you're not sure, sure where, go ahead. You will make the right choice to decide to stay here. Allah will bless you, will bless your family, and bless the community. Otherwise, if you are in the process of education over there, complete your education. Because of course, people coming back with educational skills in all of the various fields are needed. We need people well-trained. We need well-trained people to help rebuild Somaliland. So those of you that are in that process, I encourage you to finish off your studies and then come back. But in the end, know that this is the place to be. This land and neighboring lands where Islam is established, this is where we should be, and this is where our families will be preserved, our Islam will be protected, we will not be under the curse of Allah. And that is the essence of what I wanted to share with you this evening. A reminder, which all of you are aware, I'm not telling you anything which you haven't heard before. It is only a reminder. And if, as some people say, if Bilal Phillips can come to Somaliland, then is there any excuse for Somalis elsewhere not to come back? So, alhamdulillah, I am happy to say that Somaliland is a home. I do have a home here. I do have family here. 
My family is expanding here. My roots are being settled here. So inshallah, I hope to be with you for the duration, the long term, and to see Somaliland move forward in the future and be amongst the notable nations to impact positively on the rest of the world. We have a bad reputation having been listed as the most corrupt country on the face of the earth last year. We have moved to position two or three now. <laughs> we do have to work on the corruption. Huh? But other than that, inshallah, may Allah bless Somalilanders, Somalis, Somalia. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.